we do look after primarily retirees and pre so-called pre-retirees, as, as you say, uh, and I, I do think that people are coming to us too late, um, as we could have saved there's some, there's some so often some really low-lying fruit where we can save the money and get them on track um, quite easily um, if they just do certain things and adopt certain rules. Um, sometimes we find, even on the investing side, where people can actually take less risk and make more money. The earlier you start, the easier it is. Um, yeah. And that's just because if, you know, little steps over a long period of time, you don't really feel the impact of that. It's like, you know, that compounding earnings on like a little chunks along the way. You know, there's not a lot for me to work with if you only come and see me two or three years before you pull the pin. Um, the other thing is you've got time, the earlier you start, you've got time to really think through maybe what you want and maybe where you want to go. You don't have to have the answer about, you know, you have to define your goals, you know, 100% on day one, you know, each year you can come back and revisit those and, you know, get more clarity about, you know, where you want to head, how you want your retirement to look, what you thought might have been important, which then doesn't become important and things that you realise you really do want to be doing um, and how you want to spend your time. Probably the biggest mistake is they, they leave it too long to, to actually get help, to get advice. I used an analogy with some clients um, recently that, that, that it was the equivalent of, of going to see the coach halfway through the last quarter of, of the football match. Um, my ability to, to have an impact on the scoreboard, my ability to help you understand what you need to do um, is diminished simply because we have practically run out of time. Um, ad advice is not necessarily something that should start when you're 55 or 60 years old. Um, and you're scared because you're not sure that you have enough money to make the changes in the lifestyle you'd like to make. Um, it doesn't leave a lot of time for planning what is probably the biggest transition that people go through. Um, that transition from, from personal exertion income, you know, working for a living, um, to relying on your investments for an income. Um, and people, in my experience, don't start to think about that early enough. Probably, uh, the, to, I think, to make sure you've got a good retirement is that this concept of a holistic approach. Now, as part of our strategic plan, we sat down a number of years ago and actually developed a chartered accounting business as well. So we've got issues like tax minimisation, uh, the appropriate tax structures, um, uh, as well as the savings components for a superannuation or a good retirement, the calculators to be able to determine how much you need and all of that, and the regular reviews with the client. But I think it's about having your tax specialist in one room and your advisor in one room. It really doesn't work if the tax specialist is in one suburb and the advisor is in another suburb. In theory, they should all work well together. They don't. They often don't like each other and they've got different strategic relationships. The loser is the client. I find that uh, clients tend to, without pigeonholing them, tend to fit into two categories. There are ones that are ready to retire yesterday. And those are the clients that, you know, uh, are ready to implement your advice almost immediately. Then you've got ones who are reluctant to give up their work because uh, really they're not sure what they're going to do in retirement, what they're going to do with all this time on their hands. But I think part of it is also giving up a bit of their identity. So it is very much an, uh, an emotional uh, decision to make as to when that's going to happen. My role as their advisor is to ensure that they are um, ready financially and that then helps them make their decisions uh, emotionally. So if they want to retire, um, they can do so um, comfortably and with confidence and that might help, that might go some way to, to helping them feel emotionally more stable about making that certain decision. On the other side to that equation is ensuring, that, and this is something that people, they laugh, I go, a lot of clients laugh when, they, when I say to them, we want, we want to ensure that your funds last until at least your mid-90s. And people say, oh well, I'm not going to live for that long. Um, and that's, you know, we, we don't have that much control, you know, over that, that aspect of it, of um, the equation, but what we do have control over is how long your funds um, ought to last. And 
when you think about it, you don't really want to get to your mid to late 80s and then have this fear that you'll start to run out of money. Well, ideally we've planned, we started planning a lot, a lot earlier than two years out from retirement. But, if, but for those that are two years out from retirement, the key, key things really to know is what's your number in terms of spending? Um, what is it that you're, you're, to live a comfortable lifestyle for you, what does that number look like? Um, uh, and to understand the other things that you want to achieve other than just, just the lifestyle. Um, whether that's giving back to the community, to, to family, and being able to help out. So really understanding the expenses that are coming in retirement and, ha and then whether you've got enough to fund that. People still don't like to know what their expenditure is. People don't actually, surprisingly, <laughs> I remember a guy 25 years ago, I said, you've got to get a book and you've got to write all your expenses out. And he still does it 25 years down the track. And he said, that was the best piece of advice I got because they were going to go into retirement. They didn't have much money they required. So it's not how much money you, you, you need to know what your lifestyle is that you're going to have in retirement. If you're going to maintain status quo, then you need to have a lot of money. If it's $50,000, you need to have a million dollars to generate plus to generate that income stream. Um, and so uh, a lot of people have retired uh, in, in my uh, practice uh, didn't have a huge amount of money, but we've managed it right, and and they, 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 their lifestyle, they've been they've been enjoying life all the way through in that time frame. So, it's getting a handle on your expenditure uh, is extremely important, so that you know what it is now, so you can save those extra dollars or surplus dollars. The power's in surplus dollars. People don't think it through. If you haven't got no surplus dollars, you ain't going nowhere. So, uh, understanding your cost base, then you create your surplus and then capture those surplus dollars is a very good thing to be doing all the way through your life but it's more important closer to retirement. A lot of my um, prospects that come to me and we start working on, um, they do, do not know where their positions and um, the typical mistake is that I coming in too late. Um, clearly from their conversations too, they after my work that I've done with them, they say to me, oh boy, I wish I did this 10 years ago because one, I'm now relieved to know where I am. And secondly, I have somebody that, you know, I can trust and, and work with for a longer term. And I've caught, you know, and the relief as to the clarity, as to my mess of financial affairs, where it is now, where I should be, and also uh, what the expectations are from a comfortable level of retirement. I think probably the biggest mistake that most people make in the lead up to retirement is simply not getting advice. Those who do uh, will almost certainly see benefits, uh, not only in terms of how their financial system uh, situation is set up, but just in terms of confidence. Uh, one of the things I love about my pre-retiree clients is putting them in an informed position so they really know if they retire at this point in time and they want this level of income, are they on track? And if they're not, well then we can make the right adjustments so that they're in a position that when they do retire, they can do so with confidence. I think there is a, a, hu a human condition and an Australian condition to do it yourself. Um, financial planning, retirement planning is not like baking a cake. If you make a mistake with a cake, you throw it out, you start again. Retirement planning is not that way. You really need people who are professional to look after your affairs. And um, I think in, in, in a sense, my, my view would be spend a lot of time uh, doing your due diligence and your research on the advisor that you're going to select. Make sure you're looking for an advisor that actually specialises in your unique situation. The old days of having an advisor that just looks after so many different permutations of a client's life, I think is over. I think specialisation is coming in. And so look for an advisor that ta is tailored towards self-funded retirees or tailored towards you know, business owners um, or, or tailored towards your young family. Um, do they work with a lot of that particular demographic? Um, because there are differences in what the needs are and if you're working with a financial planner as a small business, it's very hard for that financial planner to be doing everything for everybody. I would say get, get clear about uh, their goals and their priorities. Uh, we've seen that people that they want to retire early or retire very soon uh, and at the same time they want a very you know they want a comfortable retirement which they might not be achievable in that short period of time so i would say uh, to them that the best way is to 
to get somebody who is good at uh, doing a, a good uh, long term, better, uh, you know, lifelong uh, cash flow for their, um, uh, with the money that they have and to make sure that the direction they are going is right. So basically what they have in their mind uh, is actually um, uh, a reality and it's achievable. Plan definitely and, and plan for what's going to get you out of bed in the morning. Not just financially, but life goals, you know, particularly for men that have worked all their life. If they don't have a hobby, they need to think about what they're going to do. You know, what's, what, what's going to get them out of the house every day and, you know, have something that gets them excited. It's a very important period in your life. And the first thing you need to do is step back a little bit and take the time to look at the big picture. So people get very focused on technical type of questions, so what should I do with this super or this asset or you know, or do I have enough to retire? But the first thing you need to do is step back and go, all right, what's retirement going to look like? Where will I be? Who do I need to provide for? And take out some of the, the noise and the stress and the headlines because people get very caught up in whatever headline of the day is, is attracting attention. So it might be positive, you know, the world markets are going well, it might be negative, but that's kind of irrelevant to your personal retirement. So it's about thinking what's really important in terms of where I live, who I, you know, what my expenses are, and then you just simplify it. So there's a lot of smoke and mirrors in when you look for advice around retirement planning, and ultimately you can break it down to very, very simple principles which is keep things diversified, keep things low cost, don't spend more than you can afford and, and get good advice. But also the other side to that is really making sure that people um, use super as much as, you know, as much as possible because you know, it's set up for retirement planning. Um, it's, you, know, you, can, you can easily save a lot more through kind of um, using super, um, then you can, or you can, you can kind of invest. You can um, not save more, but you can kind of um, the tax benefits through super are so significant that people, yeah, you know, are kind of crazy not to take advantage of it. I think uh, what we've seen in the 14 years that we've been practicing, the biggest mistake that people have in terms of preparing for retirement is actually preparing for retirement uh, and not actually thinking about what the transition of them stopping work actually may be. So it's not necessarily to do with investments, it's not necessarily to do with uh, you know, traditional maybe financial planning advice. It's actually more to do with, well, I may stop my work, <laughs> but what does life actually mean for me after that? I need to spend more time with my family or I'm gonna go traveling or what does that actually look like? The planning for retirement for a lot of people seems to be that I'm just gonna stop work. I think to be aspirational, I think lots of clients sort of um, hold back a little bit, uh, I think. Um, a lot of people don't seem to have clarity around being able to articulate their goals and, and I think people as Australians, we don't seem to carry them around in our back pocket. Uh, and so sometimes I'll, I'll have to prod and, and um, tease out. The, the information, but I think broadly people just want to know that everything's going to be okay. Um, that I'll have sufficient money to maintain uh, their existing or an aspirational lifestyle and, and yet th things over and above that are, are cream on the cake and it's, look, it's fantastic to have those things, um, but what does that look like? So I think most fundamentally my advice to, to pre-retiree clients is, is understand what you want your life to look like. Understand um, the things that are on your bucket list, okay, because we all have things that we, we want to do um, when we don't have to work for a living anymore. Um, what does that look like? And we'll help you work out what that might cost. My opinion would be getting advice, the right time to get advice is when it's important to you. But I would encourage people to get advice sooner rather than later. A typical mistake we may see is someone who puts off getting advice because they just think they should be further along or they're a little bit embarrassed about some of their choices or where they're at right now, and they can put off getting advice for years. My best suggestion for those people are 
just draw a line in the sand, let the past be the past. Let's run your own race. Let's make sure you make the most of what you're doing now. Well, on the age thing, uh, certainly uh, younger for insurances um, because you get in while they anything st or the wheels start falling off and becomes expensive and get that all set up quick, quickly and efficiently, efficiently and quite frankly through an independent advisor. It's much cheaper through us as well. It's commission stripped out. But um, uh, I, I think a lot of people come to us and I think it's wise to, uh, uh, as soon as they start having some excess cash flow, they wonder what they're doing. You know, should we pay off, the, you know, addressing bigger issues like should we pay off the home loan or, or whatever it may be, uh, or should we put money into super? Those sorts of questions should be addressed sooner rather than later. Uh, as I'm sure by the time they've come to us, they've had many conversations at home um, that have probably gone nowhere or they need help to get across the line. Uh, so come and see us uh, sooner rather than later to avoid all those conversations and uh, have it clear from a professional as to what they should do. Unbiased advice in that regard, yeah.